Hi, I'm Angie. I want to welcome you to National Indoor RV Centers, where we specialize in the sales, storage, service, and detailing of only high-end, new, and used coaches. So basically, we do it all. Hi, I'm Angie with National Indoor RV Centers. Today, I'm here in Louisville, Texas, in our service department. Next week, we'll be opening our new addition with 24 more service bays. From inception, our mission here at National Indoor RV Centers has been to open a network of service centers across the nation in the travel routes of RVers. We provide the best, friendliest, and most competitively priced RV service in the industry, period. Today, we're gonna to pull back the curtain and remove all the fog surrounding oil changes versus recommended chassis service. Now, let's head over to our chassis department. So I'm here with Dustin, one of our many amazing technicians at National Indoor RV Centers. I have to stop and give a little shout out to our technicians. Uh, they are the secret um, to our success. I know that they are what made me successful in sales and now they are what makes my team as director of sales successful. Nothing happens without our technicians. I always say we might sell you our, your first coach but I know our service team sells you every coach thereafter. So thank you Dustin for all you guys do. Also want to tell you too that Dustin is a former Navy CB. Yes. CB. Right? <laughs> so what do they do? We are the construction force of the Navy, so if they need something built, they send us in. Okay, so they, the Navy trusts him to build stuff. Obviously, National Indoor RV Centers really trust him. So, thank you, Dustin. Our CEO has a real penchant for hiring out of the military, and we've consistently grown our service technicians here by about 32 technicians a year. So, if you're looking for um, a career being an RV tech, Dustin, is this a place to come? Absolutely. <laughs> So let's start with oil and filter changes first, and then we'll go into the recommended chassis services. But before we even go to any of that, the most important thing I want you to know from this video today is at National Indoor RV Centers, we guarantee that on an apples to apples basis, we will not be beat on price for these services. So motorhomes is all that we do at National Indoor RV Centers. We are experts in our field, and we promise that you do not have to pay a dime more to do business with National Indoor RV Centers. All right, so before we get into oil change, Dustin, I feel like I owe you this kind of funny story for my daughter. <laughs> you know, like every good dad, my every time my daughter calls, it's in college, and dad asks her what question? How is the car running? And have you? Changed your oil. Exactly, first question. So sh my daughter was away getting her oil changed. She calls me because she can't get a hold of dad and says, mom, the technician is asking me which kind of oil I want, vegetable or canola? <laughs> and I'm like, no, Shay. <laughs> He's having a lot of fun with you, and he was having a lot of fun at his job. So I told her, of course. I said, just tell him you want Valvoline 520 with the Motocraft filter. So we had some fun back with him. Anyway, back to the story though. I thought you might like that. <laughs> Someone that likes our job. So obviously there's several types of oil, not vegetable or canola, but in a big diesel engine, what we're talking about conventional or synthetic oil, right? Correct. And Tell me what the difference is there. So your conventional oil is just your basic oil. Your synthetic is gonna offer better protection, a little bit longer run time. Um, but if you're not going through a lot of miles, if you're changing your oil before you hit the mileage mark, it may not be for you. So if you're not going over 10,000 miles a year, you probably want to stay with conventional versus spending the extra for synthetic? Correct. You probably won't reap the benefits if you're not exceeding mileage. So you're just spending more for no reason, basically, at that point. Basically. <laughs> so I'm out on the forum a lot reading different posts by customers, and someone will post that they, you know, paid X amount for an oil change, and someone else will be, oh my gosh, you way overpaid, this is ridiculous. But that's when I want to point out that 
every oil change is not the same. Depending on what size of diesel engine you have, it's gonna vary greatly in the amount of oil used. So if I've got a 350 or let's say a 340 horsepower engine ISB, it's gonna take 18 quarts of oil. Correct. All the way up to the Mac Daddy, the 605 <laughs> uh, ISX, right? Correct. And it's gonna take as how much oil? About 54 quarts, so substantially more. Yeah, so someone out there could be talking about their 18 quart oil change, and then this person could be talking about their 605 um, that's gonna require 54 quarts of oil. So that's why you have to be very careful when talking about an oil change and pricing that you're talking apples to apples. Not only that, they could be comparing an oil and filter change to a recommended annual service, which would include that oil and filter change plus 46 other items. Correct. Right? Correct. <laughs> All right, so now that we've finished talking about oils, different mm -hmm. types of oils, let's talk about filters, specifically oil filters, not fuel filters or transmission filters. We'll get to all those, right? There's lots. Yes, there are very many filters on your coach. So what filters do we use at National Indoor RV Centers? So we're gonna use a Fleet Guard filter if available. If we can't get it, we'll use a Napa branded filter, which is actually the private label for Wix. So depending on availability, it's typically gonna be a Fleet Guard. And Fleet um, Guard because that's what comes on the chassis when, when it's from the manufacturer, correct? That is actually Cummins brand of filters. Okay. So when a customer comes in, for an oil change, oil and filter change. Walk us through what you're gonna do. So for oil and filter only, we're gonna drain all the old oil out. Um, after we drain it, we'll let it come to a complete stop. When it completely stops draining, we put the pl drain plug back in. Uh, when we install the new oil filter, we will pre-fill it with oil so that way you don't have a dry start, which is really hard on your engine. Um, we will initial and date the oil filter so you know who did it and when. Uh, we'll refill the engine with oil, start it up, check for leaks. As long as there's no leaks, we ship it back out. So that's one thing I wanna talk about. I can't tell you how many phone calls I've had, I'm sure you've had them, where customers just had an oil change, calls me and says, I don't think they changed my oil. It's still you know, thick and black. And so you're gonna tell us why that might be the case? You'll explain that? Correct. So when you first change your oil, pretty rapidly it will go back to black. Reason being, your oil captures the soot or diesel particulates. That's what makes it black. Um, after you change the oil, there's always gonna be some on the cylinder walls, um, on the oil pan itself. Throughout the engine, there's gonna be some residual. And that residual, a little bit goes a long way. It's just like food coloring. When you are making some cookies and you want to change the color, you want to make them yellow, you put like four drops of oil or food color. Yeah, lots. Right? <laughs> so that little bit will taint the oil. That's why we date the filters so you know it's been changed. So Dustin, you finished the oil and filter change? Correct. So now I can go ahead and do another dipstick test? Yes. Okay. So the oil looks almost clear to maybe a little bit of a gold hue, not black anymore. Correct. So the gold color is what it's supposed to be. Now, if you look, you'll see that it's a little dark at the very tip. So mm -hmm. that's likely some of, remember how we talked about the residual oil sticking? That's likely some of that, that kind of got mixed in as we filled the motor with oil. But you'll see that 98% of it is all that pretty golden color. Right yep. Now. now let's go ahead, I'm gonna put this back in. Let's start up the engine and just warm it up and get it ready to move and just move it to the... We can just pull it around the block. The idea is we're just gonna circulate the oil. Once the oil is circulated, that black does start to disperse and that will cloud all of the oil so it will all look a little bit black. It'll still look a little bit cleaner than it was originally, but all of those deposits, once they, once they circulate, you will see them on the dipstick again. Okay, perfect. All right, let's get started. So we've moved the coach. We let it idle for what, five minutes, Dustin? About five minutes. Okay, and then we drove it a half a mile around our building here at National Indoor RV Centers in Louisville, Texas. Yep. So just with that amount of time and that shorter distance, we're gonna go ahead and check the oil and see how the color has changed, if it has changed. Correct. So 
so it's still pretty clear. I see a yep. little bit more uh, soot in maybe the center of the dipstick. Yeah, so before it was on the very edge of the dipstick. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of in the center so that the stuff in the center is encapsulated in the oil. The stuff that was on the side was probably from when we first put it back in. It was probably residual on that tube. So now we're seeing that it's floating or suspended in the oil itself. So had we run the engine longer, you would have expected to see it a little bit darker? Yeah, if a little you bit turn more. around and drive it for an hour, it'll probably increase. It's going to get darker the more you drive it. Now, a big portion of this, though, is depending on how well you maintain your engine. So if you wait two to three years instead of changing it annually like you're supposed to, you're probably going to have a little bit more deposits in the engine. And if you do, that will make it go straight black after just that half a mile. Okay, so if you're not uh, religious about making your annual service, yes. you're gonna see, see it right here yeah. on the dipstick. Okay, perfect, well thank you so much. Welcome. On the service side of this, why don't we look at what the chassis manufacturers recommend as far as the service intervals. So Freightliner and Spartan, I think their first service is recommended to be done at either 6,000 miles or six months. Whichever comes first, yes. Okay, and I know that there's a lot more involved in that first initial service that it may be more than your annual service, is that true? It's gonna be substantially more. There's normally 40 to 50 items, um, that depending on the manufacturer and what exactly your coach has. Uh, but it is a very important service because that first initial service, the idea is you're trying to replace every single filter you can and as much of the fluids as you can because you're trying to get any particulate matter or anything else that's left over from the manufacturer process or from break-in. So if there's you know, wear in from metal uh, you know, from your bearing surfaces in your engine, you're trying to get those flushed out as soon as possible so they're not in the system any longer than they need to be. So if you'd like a list from National Indoor RV Centers that recommends your annual services, um, you can email me at angie at nirbc.com and I'd be happy to email that back to you. As much as I'd love to go into more specifics on the different intervals and services recommended at those intervals, I know from Freightliner to Spartan that those services vary per chassis manufacturer, correct? Yeah, so your your times, uh, so the amount of months between services, the services that are performed at that time, they're all different between different manufacturers. So in order to know exactly what you need, I would uh, talk to this one. <laughs> Again, email me at angie at nirbc.com where we will send you a list um, for your specific chassis. So Dustin, I know that on the newer coaches, you can have up to as many as eight filters. Correct. So what are those filters? So you're gonna have your oil filter, you're gonna have one, possibly two. If it's a newer coach, you're probably gonna have two fill filters. Um, your hydraulic system is gonna be one or possibly two. There's a very large majority that are two as well. Uh, you'll have a coolant filter, and then you'll have two transmission filters. Okay, so let's focus just on fuel filters and why it's important if you're storing your coach for over 30 days or not using it sitting idle for over 30 days, why you want to make sure that fuel tank is full. So the main reason you want to keep it full is if it's in storage, you can build up condensation in the tanks. Um, if you build up condensation, you'll get some algae growth that can spread throughout your system. It will basically take over the system. Uh, you can clog out your fuel filters completely to where you can literally pick your coach up out of storage. You can start driving down the road. You might make it 30 miles. And if you've got algae growth, it could completely stop up the filter. And it, you could end up on the side of the road with a dead coach. Um, if you fill it full of fuel, there's less airspace to collect the condensation out of the air. Uh, and that's going to keep you from growing algae because you're not going to have water in your fuel. So you have the fuel water separator. That's first, right? and yep. then the fuel filter. So your fuel water separator, uh, if you ever get a water and fuel light on your dash, it's telling you to go drain that guy. Um, that is kind of your pre-filter, if you will, that gets most of the big stuff out of the fuel. Uh, and then from there, it will cycle from the tank 
to your primary filter, which is your water separator. And then it goes to your secondary filter, which is going to be the fine particulate filter. Uh, that's kind of your last line of defense. So if it gets through there, it's getting into the engine. That's no good. So one of the main tips, takeaways, is that you want to keep your fuel tank full when storing. What else is important to do when you're storing your coach? So you regularly want to get the fluids moving. So your rear differential, your fluid filled hubs, your engine. Uh, you want to get the fluids moving so that way the bare metal is coated with oil again just from driving and or the, the oil sloshing around. That's going to protect all the bare metal. If you don't protect the bare metal, there's a possibility it can start corroding. So starting the engine up, driving it a little bit, uh, something else that that's good for is your tires. You want to get them moved. Right, so that have no flat, flat spots. spots. <laughs> yep. um, so you want to make sure you run the engine and the generator. Um, run the engine on the coach, preferably drive it a little bit, just keep everything moving as much as possible. So one of the huge benefits to storing your coach with national indoor RV centers at any of our locations where we store over 300 coaches indoors and always plugged into 50 amp service is that just in our daily rotation of coaches and storage units coming in and out of the building, we're going to turn on your coach, we're going to move it, you're not gonna have the flat spots and you're gonna get that lubrication of the motor and engine in yep. doing so. Yep. So included in a service, there's a chassis inspection. You're gonna go through and inspect the belts and hoses. Yep, belts, hoses, uh, basically we give the coach a good once over, everything chassis related. So steering, suspension, airbags, we're gonna look for any obvious defects. You know, if there's uh, a loose bolt somewhere and it shows a wear pattern, we'll bring that up get it addressed, get it to the service advisor, and then the advisor will call the customer and proceed from there. Great, so and on that note, <laughs> another tip. One of the things that you need to have with you at all times is extra belts. I know that my CEO won't take his coach out with having extra belts. Um, perfect example of this is a customer a couple years ago. Uh, he's in Albuquerque, he's it's July 3rd, Leads out, leaves Albuquerque, he's on the road, kind of in the middle of nowhere, and he tears a belt. So he coasts over to the side of the road, he calls us, uh, we're trying to hunt down belt for him. Well, now it's July 4th, the weekend hits, it's Monday, we find, find him a belt, we get one shipped out to him. It's Wednesday now before he gets it installed and is back on the road. So he's lost a week of his vacation. So we think belts are super important, um, especially once you get to what the 45,000 miles where you probably want to replace all your belts. And when you do that, you ought to save all your old belts, keep them in a compartment in your coach. And that way you kind of have a backup if you ever need one. Um, also, National Indoor, Indoor RV Centers offers sort of a first aid kit for coaches. So if you want to come to us, have us look at your coach, make sure we put in all the belts and necessary items as, that you'd need in kind of a first aid triage kit, we can do that for you here at National Indoor RV Centers. So these are the items that will come in your NIRVC first aid kit. These are very important to have because you're not gonna be able to find these at your local Walmart store or auto parts store while you're out on the road. For example, this serpentine belt here, our CEO at National Indoor RV Center spent a week in Monroe, Louisiana waiting for this very belt. So it's nice to have these things on hand in case of an emergency. So you wanna get your first aid kit from National Indoor RV Centers, give us a call at 469-277-1330 and we can order a kit that's specific to your chassis. So Dustin, thank you so much for spending the day with us, <laughs> teaching us all about oil and filter changes, chassis maintenance. Um, again, I can't say enough about our technicians at National Indoor RV Centers. We have the best. Um, if you want the best service and the best care for your coach, make sure you bring it to us. So what's the big takeaway from today? This is National Indoor RV Center's wheelhouse. Nobody does this better. If you're looking for an oil change or chassis maintenance, when you're comparing apples to apples, we will not be beat. You don't have to pay a dime more to do service with the best. National Indoor RV Center's is the best. Make sure you go and check out my RVing 101 series 
our ProTang video, RetroBand, and no one does it better in collision repair than National Indoor RV Centers. Thanks so much for spending the time with me today and have a wonderful day.